A very warm welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar titled Using AI to Generate Ideas in Fundamental Asset Management. I would like to begin by introducing our speaker. Spencer Rich has over 15 years of investing experience as a portfolio manager, research analyst, and trader. Prior to joining Boosted.ai, Spencer was a senior investment analyst and portfolio manager at Tiger Management, reporting directly to Mr. Julian Robertson, chairman of Tiger. He has 10 years of hedge fund experience across all aspects of the investment process. Spencer began his career at Goldman Sachs, earned an MBA from the Wharton School, and graduated from the Duke University in 2003. Without further delay, I'll pass it on to, on to Spencer. Thank you. Thank you, SK. Um, thank you all, first of all, for taking time out of your busy days to join us. I know there is a, a lot going on today between uh, St. Patty's and March Madness and a lot going on in the world between Fed activity and geopolitical and war and all kinds of things that are keeping everybody's portfolios, um, keeping eyes on the ground. So thanks for taking some time. Today, we're going to focus on how to use AI machine learning for idea generation in fundamental asset management. As SK said, I spent the bulk of my career on the buy side, uh, most recently at Tiger Management um, as a, mostly a fundamental analyst portfolio manager. And uh, we're, we're actually early beta users of the machine learning platform. And so I can share some of my experiences on how we began to incorporate some of this into our process and, and hopefully can shed, shed light on some of the different use cases. Um, what just wanna do is today is, is give you an overview on how the, the machine learning platform works, uh, how it can be incorporated into a fundamental process, how our clients are getting value out of the technology. And we'll actually go through some specific examples and we'll spend some time on the actual platform doing a bit of a demo so you can see things in action. Um, what Boosted has and what we've built and what we've developed is a platform that brings proprietary finance specific machine learning algorithms that combines big data, um, data that we have on the platform, data that you choose to use as well with your investment expertise and your mandate to guide what you're trying to achieve to ultimately bring AI driven insights uh, to help you better, smarter, more dynamic idea generation all the way through to the portfolio construction side of things, helping you with sizing and timing. And today we're really gonna focus on mostly on the top of the research funnel, helping you source uh, new ideas for your investment processes. Boosted has a team of over 50 people uh, combined of machine learning experts, data scientists, financial prof finance professionals, practitioners like myself. It's really a blend of, of, of the technology with the practitioner. Um, we've spent the better part of now coming up on a decade of machine learning research to ultimately bring these cutting edge proprietary finance specific algorithms, but then making them accessible to you and your investment process. And we're really fortunate to have some great partners um, that we can count as clients where um, some which have been with us for over three years and helping them achieve a lot of their goals and, and continue um, partnering their success. This is some of our experiences and the core of our, of our founding group, our CEO, um, our CTO, head of our data science group, they, they were some of the senior founding members at Bloomberg to bring machine learning and machine learning techniques there. And it was there that they you know, spent about four years researching a lot of different avenues for how to employ machine learning in the investment management space. And they were particularly struck that um, when you look across the investment landscape, there's really relatively few firms that have the in-house desire, capability, resources to bring machine learning or sophisticated tools like that in-house or even want to do it. But there was an overwhelming desi desire to be able to explore how can you start to think about using some of these techniques as a complement to your process? So the idea for Boosted was actually born out a little over five years ago today to have a very flexible platform for any investment mandate to be able to bring machine learning as a complement to that process. Today, we have over 
40 institutional asset managers that are on the Boosted platform. It is a global client mix. We have clients in the US, Canada, UK, Europe, uh, Asia, APAC region, and it's a diverse mix. So about 45% of our clients are uh, large long only asset managers, about 35% are long short equity hedge funds. Uh, the remaining balance are between pension funds, family offices, um, active index and ETF providers. So you can see it's a really mi broad mix of different mandates of investing styles. Um, and uh, it's also a diverse range in terms of size. We're fortunate to have some of the largest asset managers um, that we're partnering with and using our platform all the way down to smaller hedge funds and family offices. And we are a post series B um, company backed by some leading VCs as Spark Capital, 10 Coast Capital, RBC, and Portage Ventures, to name a few. When I think about the future of asset management, and I know that I experienced this personally when I was an analyst and portfolio manager, is trying to blend the best of what humans do with machines. And the whole idea behind our platform and the whole ethos behind what we're doing is this is never meant to replace the human. It's meant to be a complementary tools. And there's things that machines can do to greatly improve the quality and speed of idea generation. Machines are fantastic at uh, data analysis, synthesis, and highlighting to you uh, potentially non-intuitive patterns, right? But humans bring a qualitative assessment, um, can understand the competitive landscape. There's things that humans can do and need to guide the system. So we ultimately think that combining your experience, your investment expertise, your mandate with the power of machine learning is going to be the most powerful complementary way to use the platform. So for those of you who machine learning may be new, you know, why use machine learning? Particularly if you have an investment process that you've been working on, that you've been using for, for years, if not decades, and, it, and it's working, I think more than ever, it's particularly important now to start to think about why you want to start to use this in your process. We're at this critical juncture in the economy and in the world where we're going through a major potential regime shift where you have um, starting the year off with major factor rotations. You have central banks around the globe that are all, not on, are all now starting to remove liquidity and raise interest rates. You have asset price inflation. You have commodity inflation, your price inflation everywhere. Um, you have geopolitical risk. We're at you know, war in, in the economy. It's, it's everywhere you look, there's things that are impacting the markets um, that are challenging things. And I think if you're just using traditional, more backward looking screening tools, there's a lot of things that you can miss. And the power of machine learning is to be able to take data that it's learned um, and, and most recently, but be able to synthesize that and provide to you some things that may be non-intuitive and highlight when you do start to get these regime shifts and what data is really driving your portfolio and what's most important. So it tends to be a, a really quick forward-looking analysis to give you that insight. And I think that's become even more critical for our clients as we work with them closely to help them navigate this challenging time. Maybe the last thing I'll touch on here is the time to value. Having, for those of you that have in-house quant groups, you know, it, it is a time intensive process to, to develop these um, quantitative strategies that, that work alongside the fundamental process. So having a platform like ours that can give you instantaneous ideas and access on day one can not only save time, but, but improve the portfolio research process and hopefully add alpha to your team. Um, we try to make the machine learning as easily accessible. Right. So what we've done is a lot of the heavy lifting behind data integration and the machine learning algorithms. Um, but by giving you these cutting edge algorithms, we do it in a way that's complementary with your current investing process. So there's nothing that you need to change. This is an additional piece of information for you to use. So whether you know you have a long only mandate, a long short mandate, whatever that may be, we construct completely bespoke tailored portfolio solutions for your strategy to fit how you view the world, how you invest. And it's super easy to use. I'm not a programmer. I've never programmed in my life, but I can build a model on this platform. It's a point and click user interface. It's a web-based platform where you really can just guide the system what you want to use. And it's very simple to get the output. 
And then lastly, and, and we're gonna spend most of our time talking about this today, and this is so critical, I think, in a fundamental process, is that it's explainable AI. That our platform, it's not a black box. You can control all the inputs that go into these models, into these portfolios from what you want the machine to learn from. And every decision the machine makes comes with a full list of what are the top features that led the machine to making that decision, both at a portfolio level, helping you get, take patterns, what's leading to buy signals, what's leading to sale signals, and then all the way down to your individual stocks that are most important in driving those stock moves and leading to outperformance and underperformance. So quickly high level, how the process works when we're constructing these portfolios, these models for you are for the idea generation process. You select all aspects of the model building process. So you can select your universe of stocks. That can be a really broad based index. So it could be like a world index. It could be a targeted index. If you're US focused, if you're European focused, if you're focused in Asia, it could be a sector focus, or it could be even a targeted list of names that you already know you care about. You also have the ability to select um, what data sets you want the machine to learn from. So fundamental data, technical data, macroeconomic data, alternative data sets you can pick. And then finally, what are your portfolio constraints and what are your goals? Do you have position size limits, turnover limits, number of positions? Are you trying to beat a benchmark? Are you trying to have absolute returns, alpha? Whatever those may be, you can select. And then the more information you can give us and the more information you give the platform, the better, because then we can select the proper machine learning algorithm in order to help you with pattern recognition and optimization for those goals. And we break the, the problem down into a really a two-part problem. And we're gonna focus mostly today on the first one, which is idea generation. The first thing we do, and I think the most powerful use of the, of the engine for you all would be the idea generation. So helping you rank those stocks in your universe on a relative value basis from the ones that thinks are most likely to outperform based upon the metrics you've given it, all the way down to the ones that are most likely to underperform. And it's constantly learning and updating these rank with rankings at the frequency with which you want it to in order to generate these ideas. Subsequently, once we've done a good job of this relative value ranking, we can then turn it into an actual portfolio optimization where we can help with sizing and timing. We're not gonna focus on that today. We've done prior webinars on that and we can always follow up as needed, um, but that's sort of the next step in helping you with sizing and timing of a portfolio. Today, we'll focus mostly on the dynamic stock screening and idea generation piece of it. And before we get into the platform, I just wanna highlight a few things um, that we'll touch on and then we can actually see it in the platform in a few minutes. But just to highlight what's powered by you, you select the stock universe, um, you select what data and input features you want the machine to learn from. The machine then learns from your inputs, helps you rank the stocks in your universe, and then it gives you that ranked listing for you to be able to analyze. You can go off and do your fundamental analysis and just want to iterate, this doesn't change anything you're doing. You're still going to do build your models, do your channel checks, talk with management teams, have your research meetings, but it's either a nice way for you to sort new ideas that, that are ones that would be good candidates to do the fundamental work or to cross-reference and think, what does the machine think of my picks, the things that happen to be in my portfolio? Um, some of the data that comes with the platform that you can select and use, we have some data partnerships and I've just listed a few on the left here, but um, you know, fundamental data, we have data from S&P Global, Capital IQ, we have data from FactSet, um, macroeconomic data from the Federal Reserve. We have ESG data from OWL Analytics. We have option volatility data from ORATS. We have some short interest data from S3 Partners, um, just to name a few. If there's any alternative data sets um, that you may have or subscribe to or your own data, you can easily use those or upload those or get them plugged into the APIs to have access into the, into the models. Once you've been selected the data that you want to choose, these would be all things that would make sense for you and your process. Um, we then can provide this quant lens into which features are the most important and predictive for per performance. So, so the first step is really to highlight which are most often used in the decision-making process. And then we'll get into this in the demo, but we can drill down for patterns. 
which one led to buy recommendations, sell recommendations, outperformance, underperformance, and it's constantly learning and updating. So what's different about this from maybe some backward looking stock screening and filter measures that you may use is it's going to surface to you on a forward looking basis what it thinks are the most important drivers for your portfolio and for your stocks. And as it relearns, it understands regime shifts and it can highlight to you when the importance changes. So this is probably at the heart of everything that we're doing with regard to idea generation. And this is something that I think really separates um, this platform and this machine that I've seen in practice um, from almost anything else. And that's the ability of the machine learning algorithms to separate those winners from losers. The stocks most likely to outperform from the stocks most likely to underperform. And what we do in the process, as I said, is this relative value ranking of all the stocks in your uni universe, but we bucket them. So we call the stocks that are our strongest outperformers, our strong buys. There are five star stocks as the highest rating you can get. And these would be in the quantile one, in our top quantile. And you can actually see what the performance has been, how good has the machine been in actually making these picks. So for example, for any of these models, you'll get the excess return calculation. So in this example, over a three month time period, when the machine had a strong buy recommendation on a stock, it outperformed the index by 55 basis points. Over a year, it outperformed by 150 basis points over the index and over a two year period, um, just under 200 basis points. So what we find is that the signal remains strong over long, long time periods, but you can analyze again for each your individual universe, how good has the machine been? And you can see the return profile of your long picks, versus your short picks. And even, it's, even if you're long only, it's really helpful to see this in action for even the bottom picks. These would be the zero star stocks, the ones that it's most likely to underperform. There's some massive underperformance, even, even on, the, on the downside here, over a, uh, a two year period, the ones that it's signaled as the do not buys, the sells or the short list, underperformed the benchmark by over 800 basis points. So finding out which of those stocks, hopefully making sure that you avoid any blow ups in your portfolio, um, can be a major benefit of using the, uh, the platform. From there, you can actually zoom in, right? So you want to see what are the stocks on the long side? What are the stocks on the short side? And you want to be able to do a deep dive on each individual stock. We can take all the data that you give in the machine to learn from, and we can rank those data sets from the, view, from the ones that it viewed most positively to the ones it viewed most negatively. So this is just a, a, an example, Lumber Liquidators. Um, liquidators. It's a five-star stock, the highest ranking you can get. So a strong buy recommendation. And you get this explain score of plus 24. So what does that mean? It takes all the data that you've given it to learn from, and it gives a score to each data set. How positively did it factor into that outperformance recommendation? Those are the green variables. We're just highlighting the top five here. And then ones that may be detractors, ones of flaggings that you want to dive deeper into, those would be on the red side, the negative side. And so, for example, the top most positive data point in leading to lumber, lumber liquidators being the top pick happens to be net cash flow to enterprise value. Um, it contributed plus eight points to this overall score of 24. And it's in the 100th percentile, meaning it's at the highest end of where it's been um, for this company at this point of time. And the machine has viewed that very positively. So you can go through each of these different data points, see what's driving it, cross-reference that with your own fundamental analysis, see where you agree and see where it may highlight things for you to, to check in further. On the negative side, it's flagged revenues as an example, as a detractor from this positive ranking. Revenues currently sit in the 16th percentile of where it's been historically, so at the lower end, and the machine is flagging this as a slight risk to the stock. So you get a relative value sense of what's really driving things. The same thing would be on the short side and we'll go through this when we go through the platform. We also have some nice summary um, one pagers that you can use for any of your portfolios, any of your models, any of your universes that are gonna flag to you. You can use them on a daily basis. You can use them on a weekly basis. Think of it almost as like your outsourced quant analyst on your team or your quant team that you know, can work 24 seven that can give you insights at the click of a button. And you can come in here and you can say, okay, what are my top 10 stocks in my universe right now? What are the bottom 10 picks? 
what's moved up the most? So this is a really helpful thing. And a lot of our fundamental clients like to use this on a weekly basis to say, what's been the biggest upward movers, right? What's been the biggest downward movers? Good catalyst for new ideas, because in general, the rankings of the stocks tend to be pretty stable. So they don't have huge movements um, very often, but when they do, it's really impactful. And so if you can see what's moved up a lot and then use that for new ideas or cross-reference what's in your portfolio to either help you size up positions or flag positions that maybe you wanna re-underwrite the risk on, it's a good tool to do that. So just a summary, some of the benefits of incorporating ML into your idea generation process, helping you find new trade ideas, helping you sort of sort, sort and search for the risk pro research process, how do you prioritize which one to look at for you to go off and do your fundamental analysis on? Um, number two, inflection points, right? When you have these big changes and movements, when it's able to pick up on regime shifts, when it's able to pick up on when a stock, something has really changed in the story, hopefully giving that to you before it shows up um, in the broader market and shows up in the broader data can give you a bit of a, uh, a head start. This concept of explainable AI, right? This is often the challenge of, of incorporating anything quant into a fundamental process, but we're trying to open the kimono to say, what is driving that decision? So being in a usable fashion for you, and then being that quant lens, right? That, that on-demand quant analyst, data scientist in your group, in your team, to be able to hopefully provide some additional insights um, that, that go beyond your current process. And then finally, adding conviction. As I said, this is not meant to replace anything you're doing. This is meant to be another data point. So, you know, maybe boost it as the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth check or whatever it may be on your process after you've gone through um, your own models, your channel checks, your calls with management, your research teams, and then you want to see what does Boosted think. And to the extent that you and Boosted can, can both, uh, you know, are, are in, in agreement, it may give you a little bit more conviction to put that position on or to size up that position. And so obviously today we're gonna to focus on in the demo going through some of the dynamic stock screening and research side, but I just wanna highlight a few other of the use cases that when we're working with some of our clients. Um, portfolio optimization, once you have names in your portfolio, we can help you with sizing and timing and recommending trades for a variety of different um, goals you might have or optimizations you wanna do, reducing your risk, maximizing your alpha, et cetera. We can help create AI powered hedge baskets those can be for single name risk. Those can be for um, a portfolio of risks. Those can be for a factor risk, whatever it may be. We can suggest the, the best optimal hedges that go well beyond just traditional correlation. We do a lot of factor analysis and risk analysis on portfolios. How over underexposed are you to things like momentum and value? Um, then we go a step beyond that, highlight machine learn factors. We can then allow you to control for those factors within your portfolio for risk mitigation and then um, helping you evaluate data sets, right? Whether it's traditional data, alternative data, what's most predictive um, and what leads to good outcomes. Um, and then for our quant clients, they're creating a lot of systematic strategies on the platform and actively trading those or using the signals as a piece in their portfolio. Um, so now we're gonna transition. We're gonna go over into the platform. I'm gonna go through some of this in a, in a demo on how our clients are currently using this for idea generation. So this is a, an example model. Um, as I said, everything we do is completely customized for the end user, for you to fit your mandate, your universe, how you look at things. So this is just an example. In this case, I use the Russell 1000 as my universe, just to give you a broad based example. I selected the goal to be maximize alpha and I instructed the machine to maximize alpha over a 21 day investment horizon, a one month investment horizon. However, we have um, some very large, long-only clients that want to have very long investment horizons. So you can make it a one-year investment horizon, whatever you'd want to have. We have others that are more short-term focused. You can make it a day, a week. That's completely up to you. You can control everything from your rebalance period to how often you want the machine to learn to the data sets that you're going to have. And we're going to start there. So the data that you want to use. Um, we have thousands and thousands of data points that are already preloaded in the system. All you have to do is point and click, search for them, tell the machine what you want. The ones that I've selected for this example, I've just chosen a broad base of different um, ones that are a combination of fundamental, some balance sheet, some income statement, um, some technical, some momentum, 
analyst expectations, some macroeconomic. So as I go through here, you'll see some that I'm sure many of you are already using in your process. Uh, things like forward earnings to price, dividends to price, EBITDA, uh, the 10 year minus the three year rate, capital efficiency, um, cash flow, all these different things that I'm sure would be, you know, as part of your process. But depending upon your focus, depending upon your sector, you're going to know better than we will. What's, what do you think is important? You can add features, you can remove features. Then what we do is that first sort of swat, slash of, of optimization in terms of what is the machine think are the most important drivers on a forward looking basis for your portfolio. And the word cloud, the size of the text is going to correspond with this importance score. So the importance score is how often were these features used in the decision-making process? And it's not fixed. It's going to be updating. Every time the machine learns, it's going to surface to you and re-rank these data sets. And this is really important, right? As I talked about in the beginning, in a time like now where everything seems to be in flux and changing. And so highlighting what is the machine view to be the most important predictive things at a portfolio level. Then from there, you can start to drill down even further. And we can start to discern what patterns is the machine able to learn from some of this data? So it'll go back through in, in history and it'll surface to you a high level. Um, and I'll just use analyst expectations. So this is um, analyst expectations relative to the, to the price today. Orange is a high feature value. Okay, so high analyst expectations, the machine has generally learned have led to strong buy recommendations. So when analysts have a, have a high um, consensus call relative to the closing price, they generally got it right and it's led to buy recommendations. Conversely, when it's blue, it means it's a low feature value. When the analyst expectations are at the very low end relative to the closing price, it's led the machine to pick up on the pattern of the stronger sell or underperform. And I guess in this particular case, analysts have gotten that problem right. But you can see these patterns emerge for any of the data sets that you give it to learn from, right? So whether it's something like price momentum, high price momentum um, have actually worked and the machine has, has viewed that as a buy signal. Uh, but you can come in for any of these data sets and be able to see high level at a portfolio level, what has led to buys, what has led to sells. Then from there, you can drill into your ranked list. And so this is really at the, at the beginning, at the heart of the idea generation process. So at any point in time, you can come in here and it will give you what does the machine view to be um, the stocks most likely to outperform or the stocks most likely to underperform at any given time. Um, and those give it a second to, to load up. Reload it here. Let's probably sign in. So while we do it, while it's loading, I'm going to pull in. This is a one pager that came from this particular model, where, and we'll dive into it in a moment on the platform, where you can see um, a few different pieces of analysis. So number one is you want to see how good was the machine in when it's making its five-star picks. In this particular case, the top 20%, which are the strong buy, the, the top outperformers, they returned an average of 17.7% versus the benchmark, the Russell over the same time period of 10%. The bottom picks, these are the, the red line. These are the cells, the, the do not buy. Um, you know, the do not buys or, or shorts, if you can short, they returned an average of 2.44% versus the bench of nine. So this spread, right, getting confident, confidence and watching this in real time that the, on average, the machine has outperformance when it's making its strong buys and underperformance when it's making its shorts or sells. And then being able to come in and see for your rank list, this is the actual rank list for the individual stocks um, in your universe. So, for example, Wix is the number one ranked stock, followed by Facebook, then Everbridge, um, Ring Central. And the idea would be that these would be customized for you based upon the data that you gave it to, to learn from. The same thing on the bottom 10 stocks. So, what are the ones 
most likely to underperform over your investment horizon for your goals. And then the other piece of it too is for catalysts. So what have been the biggest upward movers from the last time the machine relearned rebalance? And this is a really good initial tool, something like post, which moved up 500 places from the last time um, the portfolio rebalanced. And it's currently a four out of five star stock. So it's moving much more positive into the buy zone. So it could be a, really, a good catalyst for you to start to, to do a little bit more work on to see if you agree. Same thing on the downside, um, whether you're looking for new short ideas, if you're looking for optimal hedges, or if you're looking, if these names happen to be in your portfolio, again, good catalysts for you to be able um, to say, okay, well, let me see why does the machine not like that, that name? And you can decide whether you wanna do something about it or not. Okay, now the machine, um, this is on the platform. So we've now loaded all the rankings as you saw like, from the summary, Wix, Facebook, Everbridge, the same names. I can come in here on a real-time basis and I can open up and I can see what are those data points that are leading um, the machine to like Wix right now as the number one ranked stock. So EBITDA enterprise value and uh, analyst expectations, assets to price ratio. So we'll use assets to price ratio as an example. It's contributed plus seven points to this overall explained score of plus 114. So it's an additive score of all these different positives, less all these negatives. And you can see it's in the currently in the hundredth percentile. So a definition of what is it calculating and what's the percentile. So it's in the hundred percentiles, it's the highest it's been um, versus all the other stocks in this universe. And the machines view that as a very positive thing. Same thing in sales to enterprise value ratio. Um, also at the high end of where it's been um, versus its own company history. And the machine has viewed that as a positive thing. On the downside, things that we want to, you know, kind of take a further look at and before you put a position on, return on assets, um, currently in the fifth percentile, so really low return on assets relative to where it's been and the machine's viewing that as a slightly negative uh, point. But I could look at every single data point that, that we give the machine to learn from and I'll get that score, right? So what's the explained score, positive, negative, and where does that data point sit um, in its history. So you can see there's probably about 50 or so variables here, but you can control which those variables are, um, add, remove, test, and it will return to you the relative importance. What's really interesting is that the machine's actually able to learn unique lessons stock by stock. So you'll see there's some overlap here in terms of the number two stock. The number two stock happens to be Facebook Meta, but the combination and the score are going to be different. So also a five-star stock, so strong buy, slightly lower explained score, and what the data that it's able to, to learn from and what it's picked up on also going to be score, scored slightly differently. So it's able to learn unique lessons on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. I could see the same thing on the short side. So if I rank these now by the lowest ranked stocks, the zero-star stocks, these would be the shorts or the sells or the do not buys, Rivian happy, happens to be the lowest ranked stock right now in this particular model. Um, you can see it's got a negative score of minus 95. Um, forward earnings to price, one of the biggest drivers of this negative opinion. It's in the first percentile, lowest forward earnings to price it's been. Um, and the machine views that as a very negative indicator. So same idea here on the shorts or sells, Norwegian Cruise Line, the next one, why does it not like it? So kind of that spirit of being that quant analyst on your team, being able to source these ideas and then dig in. And then you could also come in and you could sort by what are the biggest movers. So I just sorted by Delta, which are changes. So post, that was that example in the one pager, what's moved up the most. Post has moved up 500 places. That's a really big ranking change. In general, the rankings tend to be very stable. So when you do get these big movements, it's interesting, particularly when it starts to go into uh, more of the buy zone here for you to be able to see why, why did the machine make those picks um, and to be able um, to, ultimately make the call yourself, do you agree? And is it warrant further analysis? Um, same thing on the downside, I can see what's moved down the most. It looks like in this case, Royal Gold moved, fell 381 places. The machine's now very negative on it and I can see why. So a really good um, source of, of new different ideas for you to be able to see. We're not gonna get into this because that's not, um, uh, we can do this at a later date, but you can also see at any point in time the actual trades that the machine would, would recommend you making based upon your portfolio construction queries and your goals. 
So you could have a live, um, you know, whether it's daily or weekly or monthly or quarterly, it would present to you what it would recommend you buying, what it would recommend you selling and why, right? And then it's ultimately up to you whether you wanna make that decision. And you could also have the same thing in terms of your holdings. You know, what does it view given your portfolio context, given your constraints, what percent of your portfolio would it recommend you having? Um, how does that compare versus the index? So it's a real-time basis, a real-time analysis for you to be able um, to utilize this um, in, in any way that you want. Um, so SK, maybe it's a good time to pause there, see if any questions have come in. We can um, start to kind of tackle those and, and uh, take it from there. Of course, thank you very much, Spencer. Uh, there's a lot of interesting questions. Let's try to get uh, most of them with the time we have at hand. The first question asks, uh, presuming a cost benefit analysis has been made on developing AI tools, machinery and infrastructure when trading, what are the standout returns or key differences when using AI versus with not against the cost to purchase and maintain? Really good question. So if I'm understanding the question, it's a little bit of, a little bit on the return on investment, a little bit of return return on time. Um, it's a great question because I think you know it, it it depends a little bit on how you want to use it, and each model is going to be slightly different. So when you think about the value that something like this is going to bring to you, I think about it in a couple of different ways. So you have the ability to see your live portfolio, your live model in action. Um, this one's been running live since 2020, so you can see these actual results, but you can come in and you can say, okay, well, how good was the machine? Like I can actually, not only can I see some of those excess return figures, but I can say, if I had listened to the machine always on their buy picks, on their sell picks, what was the actual return? So you could come down and you could say, okay, well, the annualized alpha was 20% and it had a 1.3 sharp and the annualized return was 30% versus the benchmark of roughly 10%. Um, and then I could start to come into this quantile rankings and say, well, when it was making those buy recommendations, those five-star picks, what was the average return on those? Okay, the average return was 17%. So when I compare that versus the benchmark return of just under 10, you know, there's over 700 basis points of alpha if I had just listened to the machine. So. You know, as I think about the value, you can you can very easily start to have a calculation on on the value side, depending upon you know how you're using this and how you're utilizing this. I think from the time side, um, I mean it's instantaneous, and in that you know you could get one of these models constructed for you tomorrow. Um, it's that quick and that easy, and then you could start monitoring that on a real time basis. Versus you know when a client is deciding, hey, do I want to like do I want to expand my quant team? Do I want to hire a quant team? Do I want to hire a quant analyst? You know, that's a really expensive, it's a really time um, intensive process versus outsourcing it, being able to instantaneously, instantaneously have results, monitor those results. You know, the time to value, I think is, is a really critical piece. And then also saving time in the research process by highlighting ideas for you to be able to do what you do really well, which is that deep dive analysis leave the data analysis and synthesis to the machine, which what it does well. And again, that complementary tool. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, next question asks, should fundamental managers have a human overlay on AI generated ideas? Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, just to bring it home from the beginning of the talk, I mean, Without a doubt, I think that the, that's where the industry is going is this complement of human plus machine, right? We, we've seen it in, in, in the world of chess, right? Where the, the best chess players were getting beaten by the computers and then the best chess players started pairing up with the computers and would always beat the computer alone, right? So, so I think the same is going to be true in investing. That the best teams and the ones that are going to ultimately survive in advance are the ones that can adapt to this regime and incorporate this into their process. But it's always gonna require that, I think that human oversight to drive the inputs into the process, to be that qualitative check on top of it, to have the nuances that machines can have and utilize that combination to have a bit of a best of, of both worlds, if you will. Thank you. Next question. Can you insert ESG data in your predictive an, uh, analysis? 
Yeah, that's that's a great one. And, and we've gotten so many requests and questions around this. ESG is, is obviously becoming a really important issue. There's two ways that you can do this in the process. I mentioned we have ESG data on the platform via OWL Analytics. Um, you can either do it in your portfolio construction side where you can utilize the, the composite scores to make sure that your portfolio adheres to a certain E, S, and G score so that when you're making your picks that let's say you want it to be in the top decile of the E, S, and G, you can make sure that the picks that the machine is actually going to recommend to you adhere to those goals. You also have the ability that if you have ESG data that you wanna incorporate in the word cloud that we looked at, you can put in any of the ESG data and it can actually learn to see um, you know, are, are, are certain scores with regard to each category predictive and help in the actual outperformance of those stocks. So there's two ways to do it, either at the input level of learning from the data to synthesize ideas or at the portfolio construction side to make sure you adhere to a sort of minimum criteria, a minimum threshold. Awesome. Uh, next question. Does this work for U.S. stocks only? Um, how about other markets? Yeah, um, no, so it's global. We have a global client base. We support um, almost all stock markets in the world. There's probably a few smaller emerging markets um, that would need to be added, but those take about like a, a week or two to get added to the platform if, if a client wanted to have them. But yeah, you know, we support um, almost all stocks uh, across the globe, US, Canada, Europe, uh, UK, um, China, APAC region, Australia. So um, it's all it's all there. And then I should also point out um, anything with an ISIN or QCIP um, would work. So we work with ETFs so we can help with asset allocation decisions, sector decisions as well. Perfect, thank you. Next question, do you have a preloaded set of features or can the user uh, specify them? Yeah, both. Um, we, there's some easy buttons that we have to get you started. We have presets, you know, as I mentioned, we have a team of over 50 now. The majority of the folks on the team are doing a lot of the research around the, the machine learning data science. And so we try to give to you some of those learnings. And the, so there are some presets that we have that get you started. Um, that being said, we find that the power is in you also helping guide the process because you're gonna know better what data drives your particular stocks, what drives your industries your geography. So having the ability to complement some of those data sets, add, remove, test. Um, so you have the ability to completely customize it from scratch or put the onus on us and we can do it for you. Completely up to you. Great. There's a question on pricing. Um, I, do you want to quickly answer that? Uh, yeah, well, I won't get into specific pricing because we'll talk about it's really on a usage basis and, and how and the use cases and how many users and how many models. Um, but we have a, a number of different flexible arrangements depending upon um, how you envision using this. And it's probably best to talk about that sort of one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, maybe let's, we'll just squeeze in one more question. Uh, what fundament, fundamental data sets are used or are available? Yeah, so we have um, fundamental data from SMB Global, Capital IQ. Uh, we have data from FactSet. Uh, we have macroeconomic data from the Fed. Um, so I would say the vast majority of things that would probably be searchable on Bloomberg would, you know, you'd be able to find them that come in the platform and that's, you know, not to get in, um, too much into it, but it's all incorporated into the pricing. So you don't pay per data set. It's all part of it. And we've done a lot of the heavy lifting of cleaning the data, having it in a usable fashion and letting you just query and being able to search and add those to the models point and click very easily, just like you can see here in this, in this, um, platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Spencer. With that, we are at the top of the hour. Uh, if we could not get to any, any of your questions, uh, and if you need to talk more about AI and asset management, please feel free to, re to reach out to us via email or LinkedIn, and we will be very happy to help. Um, lastly, thank you for taking the time and doing a great presentation, Spencer. I'd also like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, like we said earlier, the presentation recording will be sent in an email within the next day. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.
Yeah, thanks everybody. And I know, you know, we're probably just scratching the surface. This is meant to be an intro. Uh, my email is sr at boosted.ai. If anybody wants a follow up to do a deeper dive, feel free, reach out to us. And thanks again for taking some time and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank <music> you.